Hello everybody, this is Darth Lord 1997 Today, we're taking a second look at the first three chapters of the webcomic, Suhira, City of Water. You might be thinking, wait, Darth Lord, didn't you already do this? Well, the answer is yes. Even though my first review did get positive feedback, I myself saw many flaws when looking back and found areas that could be improved. I want these reviews to do this comic justice. A mediocre review of a comic such as Suhira just doesn't sit right with me. So, without further ado, here we go. All edits to the text bubbles are to hold back spoilers. However, there are still enough left there to put that big obnoxious spoiler warning text that everybody does. Now, let's move on so I can get this off my screen. Suhira is a fantasy webcom- Oh, so that's how it's gonna be, huh? Alright, hang on one moment. I'm gonna go fix this. Once and for all. There, now that that's taken care of, as I was saying, Suhira is a fantasy webcomic written and illustrated by Rihanna Dorsey, who also does work on Cloud Riders by Hashtag Comics. Many years ago, the world looked familiar to how we know it today. However, all of that changed when the goddess of water, Akia, and the god of fire, Ignis, engaged in what is now referred to as the Divine War. All the Earth's oceans have now disappeared. However, the ruler of the city of Iona, King Zahi I, was somehow able to convince Akia to leave humanity one last blessing of water. So water hasn't disappeared completely, but it's not without a price tag. However, legend tells of a land, high in the Everpeaks, where the last lake on Earth remains, and above the lake is the city of Suhira, where Akia and her followers live, where they have all the water they could ask for, and live in peace under Akia's watch and care, and anyone who is willing to follow Akia can enter. However, over the years, well, centuries really, humanity has come to believe that Akia has abandoned humanity, and the city of Suhira is dismissed as a fairy tale. Chapter 1 Aku. Aku. Akure? Akure? A Q... Uh, chapter 1! Fast forward to the year 2438, where the story begins. Two young princesses of present-day Iona, Wahida and her older sister, Hadima, are reading a book on the world's history, such as the Divine War, the Disappearance of the Ocean, and the City of Suhira. Wahida is amazed at the idea of this city, and she and her sister pray to Akia together for her to show them the way to the city. However, as time goes on, the royal responsibilities of being princesses and discouragement from their parents starts to pull them farther and farther apart. Hadima's beliefs in Suhira dwindle, but Wahida's continue to grow. Then, when Hadima is married to Prince Utimio to become the next ruler of Iona, it's here where Hadima reveals to Wahida that she regrets encouraging her to pray for passes to a city that she doesn't believe exists. Wahida, now feeling betrayed, runs off and continues to pray to Akia on her own. Chapter 2 Epicless Huh, that's more like it. Throughout Chapter 2, Wahida's beliefs in Akia continue to make Wahida feel more and more detached from her family. After an event I dare not spoil, she decides to run away and go to Sihira, where she believes she will find happiness and peace. Chapter 3 Ferris Chapter 3 starts with Wahida, now out in the wilderness. After escaping a life or death situation, no joke, she finds herself at the mercy of the vast desert and its excruciating heat. She lost her map and supplies back at that run-in with the guards. But she continues, she has to make it. However, the heat continues as well. It gets worse. That sand has really got to itch by now. This heat, how much hotter could it possibly get? 
It keeps going and going, and... <laughs> well, I admit, she made it farther than my expectations. However, when all hope seems lost, she runs into two guys. At first, they expect her to be part of a group of bandits. However, then they notice her clothing, proving she's from a wealthy family, who would pay a very high amount for their daughter back. So, the three of them begin a journey to the city of Pani, to get Wahida supplies for her journey, and the secret intention of turning her back to where she's from. There is something that happens right before Chapter 3 ends, but I can't mention that without major spoilers. So yeah, that's the plot of the first three chapters. It's not as cliche as you might be thinking it sounds. I will give you this, the comic doesn't really offer a lot of new ideas. However, it uses those ideas in new ways that hasn't really been used that often before. The story has really good pacing. It is a bit slower in the first two chapters, however that's because chapter 1 is the setup to get us familiar with the characters, then chapter 2 is where we start to move forward. The story really takes me back to my childhood, watching Disney films like The Lion King and Aladdin. The art style has a bigger role in that comparison, but we'll get to that later. However, that doesn't mean the story is entirely kid friendly. Some foul language and other things do bump up that rating to PG-13. The story's world is also well written. Rihanna understands, the best stories aren't limited to what's being told to you right now. This comic takes place within a larger world that goes beyond what she's telling us now, and there are a ton of small hints throughout the story that grow this fictional world. I doubt you'll catch everything in the first read. And this comic is great to reread and catch new things each time. Now, moving on to the art of this comic. If it wasn't obvious at this point by what I've shown you, the artwork is just incredible. Rihanna just has this unique style. And even though it doesn't 100% match Disney's old style as well as 2D DreamWorks style, it really takes me back to it. Things such as the use of colors, lighting, and effects, Rihanna clearly knows how to use them properly. I really don't know how she managed to make a desert, a barren, empty wasteland, look beautiful. Now of course that beauty disappears in chapter 3, but that's because we moved on from the luxurious royal style into the wilderness. Now if I had to be critical, some of the lighting in chapter 2's panels is a bit too bright, and it really makes a sharp contrast. However, that's just a small nitpick. Suhira also uses a different style for displaying than most other comics. A lot of comics have panels against a flat color background. However, Suhira uses one large image as the backdrop, with panels overlapping. The bottom panel is usually the part of the background we need to see. Each panel looks like a full drawing. Comics are really tough to pull off, so it's natural for artists to cut corners either by the lack of patience or skill in a particular area, like detailed, demanding backgrounds, or character expressions. However, I rarely see that in this comic. Each panel looks great, and just about everything has a tremendous attention to detail. Now I will say some detail is sacrificed in background drawings when there's a lot there, but never enough where it looks horrible. I really have to congratulate Rihanna on capturing both story and art here. Now one could say that's pretty common to see in comics, but that's usually because it's a group of people working on one comic. This is one person. And even then when it's a group of people, that's not as common as you might think. I already went over that in my previous review, so I won't bring it up again here. However, art and storytelling aside, I believe the absolute best thing about this comic is the interaction. The Sihiro website does have a comment section where you can post your thoughts on the page, talk with other readers, or just have some fun. Rihanna is very interactive with her audience and she's a very friendly person. She answers questions about the story one may have, unless that answer spoils something coming up in the plot, reacts to some fun jokes people comment, and even makes some jokes of her own. 
The comment section is a very friendly and welcoming place, and it makes being part of the story's journey all the more fun. So, overall, I really like this comic, and I think you guys should really check this out. Especially if you grew up with the classic 2D animated Disney and DreamWorks movies. The comic isn't complete yet, however, there is enough for someone to jump in. The comic update schedule varies, however, it's pretty much every Wednesday. However, thanks to the generous support of you Patreon- Hey, what's wrong? What's happening? Why is the screen black and white? And why'd the record scratch play? Wait, what? A script change? What do you mean there's a script change? I'm making the video! Dang it, give me that! Dear Darth Lord, I regret to inform you that due to unforeseeable difficulties, the update schedule has been modified to better reflect... Oh, um... Okay, apparently now the comic updates when it can. Okay then. So, as I was saying, the comic update schedule does vary. However, it rarely goes on hiatus. And don't worry, when it does go on hiatus, it's for a good reason. I will put a link to page one in the description below, so you guys can check this out if you want to give it a chance. I highly recommend you do. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this re-review. And I'll see you guys next time.